Now we're going to extend our constraint problem into three variables. So in the past, I've only given you functions of two variables. Now we're looking at a function of three variables. So our job is to um, to find all the critical points of this function and the highest and the lowest values of this function for this given constraint. So remember, if you're looking at, uh, if you're looking at a function of two variables, um, when you compute a gradient vector then you're going to get a vector that would be living on, two D, on a 2D plane, on the XY plane. But if you're looking at a function of three variables, which we are here, so if you're looking at a function of three variables, when you compute the, uh, the gradient vector of this function, you're going to get a vector that would be living, on, that would be living in 3D space. It would be a vector uh, floating somewhere in 3D space. So just bear that in mind. And when, when you look at this, in your mind, picture this, because this is your domain here. So the 3D space, the 3D space will represent your, your domain. So when the function spits out a number here, in your mind, picture it as, as it's spitting out some sort of number. Well, just, just picture that in your mind. So our first step is to turn this into a function of this form. So our first step is to turn it into a function of of into a function of this form up here so now we've got two functions of the same form so so in a way it's the same it's, a, it's of the same format so now we can we can compute the gradient vector of this so uh, so that would be a vector floating somewhere in 3d space and then we can compute the gradient vector of this and then that would be a vector floating somewhere in 3D space. So they're, they're on par with each other, if you like. These two functions are on par. So, when, so now we can compute the gradient vector, compute the gradient vector, and then we can look at these two vectors. So our first step is to uh, compute the gradient vector of both. So computing the gradient vector of this will then give us this. Compute the gradient vector of this, it will then give us this. So um, so now we require the two vectors to be exactly the same, but only differs by an a scalar amount. So um, so now we can put this into here, and uh, we can put this into here. Uh, don't forget, you've got to multiply this as well. Uh, that will then give us this. So uh, so now we are now we are here. So um, we got to find um, we we got to somehow demand that this thing to be exactly the same as this thing. Well, demanding that would be the same as you looking at the looking at the um, the i component and and uh, and trying to trying to make these two to be the same, and then looking at the j component, looking at the j component, make these two to be the same. And then looking at the k component, get these two to be the same. So you demanding that this side equals this side is the same as you demanding these three. It's just that these three are a lot simpler. And don't forget about our constraint. So our job is to find combinations of lambda, x, y, and z in such a way that all four will be satisfied at all times. Okay, so so um so you could develop a systematic way of scanning through all the possible combinations of lambda, x, y, and z in such a way that all four will be satisfied. Um, if you look at lambda, lambda can either be zero or non-zero. Let's look at a, a case where it's zero. So when you put zero into here, and into well, when you put zero into the lambda, this thing here will then become um, two x equals zero. Uh, and then when you put zero into here, um, this thing here will then become negative two y equals zero. When lambda is zero, it must mean that x must be zero for this to be satisfied, and y must be zero for this to be satisfied. So, um, so when you put zero into well, this thing, if you put zero into lambda here, um, this will always be satisfied. Well, the point here is that when lambda equals zero x must be 0 
because you, you have to put a zero on here for this side to be the same as this side and y must be zero for this side to be exactly the same as this side so when lambda equals zero x equals zero y equals zero so now um now now use a constraint so put this into here and uh, put this into here that must mean that z must be plus minus root three so now we've we found two critical points we found our two critical points um, that's when um, at these two points the two gradient vectors will, will be exactly the same I don't know which way they're pointing but they differ by no actually well they're, 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 they're pointing in exactly the same direction they, are, they differ by an escalar amount so our next step is to consider when when lambda is not zero so when when lambda let's look at the case when lambda equals zero so when so let's look at the case when lambda equals one so when lambda equals one if you put this into here you're gonna have 2x equals 2x so this thing here will always be satisfied so let's let's ignore this and uh, when you put one into here this thing this thing here will then become this so that implies that um, y must be zero the only way the only way that this side is the same as this side is when y equals zero and then when when lambda equals one let's put it into here this then becomes this the only way that this side is the same as this side is when z equals zero so when when lambda equals one x must be um, well use our constraints again here put this zero into here zero into here x must be must be positive one negative one so we found two more critical points so so when you when when you look at this here it means that um, somewhere in 3d space we are two great our two gradient vectors will be exactly the same will be ex will be pointing the same direction if you like well anyway we found two more critical points so now um, now let's look at a case where well let's 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 look at this thing here when will this thing be always will always be satisfied it will be satisfied when you put negative um, a half into here so let's look at a case where lambda equals negative a half because we've already taken care of this now let's look at this thing here well if we if you put this into here then uh, then this thing here will always be satisfied so now let's put this into here so that's going to give you 2x equals uh, negative x um, when will this equal this well it means that x must be zero and then, and uh, and if you put this into here um, that would give you uh, zero equals um, negative 3z when will this thing be the same as this thing It's when z equals zero so when lambda equals this x equals zero lambda equals zero uh, put this into here put this into here y will be plus minus root uh, root a half so now we found two more critical points so that means um, that means somewhere in 3d space our two gradient vectors will be exactly the same one's pointing this direction and one's pointing in this direction or whatever but the point is that they're, they're, they're in the same direction um, well they're, they're, they differ by an escalar amount so we found six critical points so we found six critical points one two three four five six so now let's see where it jumps to on, on the function so put this into the function this will jump to zero this will jump to zero uh, this will jump to one one negative a half positive a half so um, so the highest points will be will be here and here and the lowest will be at um, negative a half okay